The latest research shows girls are going through puberty earlier than ever before. Reaching womanhood at age 10 and 11 is now commonplace. So why is it happening? What are the implications and what effect does it have on our teenage girls? Body image expert Danielle Miller joins us. Good morning, Good morning. Danny. This new research, what's it telling us about why um, girls are going through puberty so early? Yeah, there's so much been research. There's so much research rather being done in this area. I think it's because we're generally quite surprised at this. The average age now when young women would start puberty would be 12 and 8 months. And that's quite significantly different over the years. What we've seen in the last 20 years is that age plateauing out. Yet still anecdotally you'll hear lots of parents, as you indicated, saying that their daughter's starting as young as 10, you know, 9. This wow. is significant because it now means the majority of girls by the time they're at the end of primary school have started puberty. But if the age of starting puberty is 12 years and 8 mm. months. That, that is considerably younger than what it was. Yeah, absolutely. And we're not exactly sure why. There is a body of research being done into this. One of the theories is certainly around diet and the fact that we are, do tend to be more obese. Now, um, some of the researchers will say, well, are we actually seeing true breast buds developing or is it just fat cells or fat deposits in that area? What happens when a, a girl uh, gets to a critical fat mass? Mm. Um, what ticks off? Yeah, look, some of the, um, the body has, a, I guess, a quite a primitive response to that and it says, well, I'm okay, I'm not starving, I'm therefore able to reproduce. That would be one of the theories. Mm. And that hormones would be released in the hypothalamus and the brain that would then prepare the girl to be able to, um, to, to give birth, to have a child, to conceive. Um, but I guess what the theories you know, don't tell us is the practical realities of that mm. for parents and for young girls at home. And mm. they are significant. Some primary schools aren't really equipped to cater for this and they don't have facilities for little girls. Also, of course, you've got little girls whose bodies are all of a sudden saying, you're a grown-up woman, yet, of course, mentally and emotionally, they aren't. Yeah, so at 11, you've started um, um, all this and emotionally you can't possibly be ready. Yeah. Does that turn them to be more sexually active? Is, is that the direct? It's all going. Well, there's a concern about that, of course, but the media also at the same time and popular culture encourages little girls to grow up very fast, doesn't it? So mm. we know that childhood shrinking in terms of what girls are presented to in popular culture mm. and we know that physically they're developing whilst emotionally and, and um, intellectually they're not always able to cope. So this is a really problematic phase so for parents. So how should, should parents, especially mothers, deal with their, their little girls at 11 and even 12, yeah. 12 years and 8 months yeah. on average, how do they deal with them? Yeah, I think it's really important that we are informed and that we inform our daughters too. You really do need to have these conversations. It's also really important that we help our girls deconstruct the media and understand that the images they get telling them to grow up very fast and to put their currency in terms of how thin and hot they are mm. is not something we want for them and not to buy into things for little girls that are quite toxic. I mean, a lot of the marketers are tapping into this. If you look mm. at Abercrombie and Finch just recently, they were criticised for bringing out padded bras mm. that came in a seven year old size padded bikinis I mean this is just crazy stuff mm. they might be physically developing but emotionally they aren't and we need to protect them and understand that they really are still little girls you know adding to this there was an article yesterday about Facebook on the site so encouraging teenagers this is Facebook encouraging teenagers to rate their sexual partners yeah well I guess it wasn't Facebook as such it was a young teenage boys yeah. in particular who had set up this particular Facebook page where yeah. they would rate out of 10 their female um, teenage partners. Mm. Absolutely alarming stuff. Can you imagine the pressure? And don't forget, this is a no-win game for mm. adolescent girls. If you're rated as being poor sexually, you know, then you're a dud. If you're rated as being good, then you're probably classified as being some sort of a slut mm. or a skank. Um, again, we're seeing that girls have put in incredible pressures on them and the nature of technology has meant that all of this speeds up and it it's so viral. immediate and it mm. goes viral, as you said. And here's an issue we have talked about a couple of times mm. before, Danielle Miller, and this morning, uh, you know, fashion experts are telling young girls to cover up. Mm. I mean, they're wearing skirts that mm. don't cover their cheeks, um, you know, exposing mm. navels, boobs, the full lot. Um, yep. How do we address this? Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I know as a parent of two teenage girls, I have to have conversations sometimes about, you know, what's appropriate and what's not. Um, I think the challenge is, as I said before, popular culture is saying your currency is your sexuality. Here's Paris, here's Lindsay, here's your role models, mm. here's Miley, be, be untamed. Yet on the other hand, we mm. shame girls for doing just that. Mm. So they're getting very mixed messages. I think as parents, we should set some boundaries and provide some guidelines as well. 
communicate, help. communicate, communicate. Absolutely, yeah. every time. Mm, terrific. Uh, thanks for all that input this morning. Thank you, Danielle Miller. Pleasure as always. More coming up. This could save a lot of time in the laundry.